right. It's that time again. That day again. For some more coding. Let's flip over. There we go. Alright, so. Uh, last week. <laughs> uh, what happened last week? Well, so some work was done on a, uh, a, a React component for integrating with ChatGPT. Um, and, well, with the API. And then we ran into some roadblocks with uh, trying to integrate that into Django. And there was some discussion that day, uh, last Sunday, on uh, you know where to go from there. And uh, I decided I was going to pursue uh, making uh, a Rust backend and then probably using uh, React Admin, which is this uh, open source, um, call it a library. Not quite a framework, but a thing for making like admin UIs with React that you can then plug into any kind of API. Um, and, and just kind of going down that road. And so what I thought I would do is I would uh, um, just kind of start from scratch. So really, I mean, I have some example code from the Django project and we have the, the, the uh, React component from last week, but uh, otherwise we're just gonna like figure out how to set up a, a like a test API with uh, Rust and some of these things, uh, Diesel and Axum, and um, and add on to that from there, and then uh, go from there. We may end up making like a, a Python. I don't know why I said I guess a worker here. Okay then. completing my thought from <laughs> the other day as I was prepping for this. Anyway, so, so potentially using Python for some things where there are really nice Python libraries for doing things. Um, and yeah, yeah, and then later on we can kind of see how to like integrate all that together into maybe um, a single like uh, API that combines them all together. And maybe that's just like an API gateway using Nginx, which is this article I found, or maybe that's GraphQL, I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna take it, take it a, a step at a time. And so um, I could call this repository something like video processing tool, like uh, like I just named the folder, but we, could, we can come up with a, a random name. Oh yeah, I have to refresh the page, right? Cuddly Eureka. That's a fun name. Uh, that's available too. Friendly system? No, it's too generic. <laughs> uh, solid Octo memory? No, no, no. Verbose Fortnite? No, that might be confusing. Uh, nope. Glowing Telegram. <laughs> uh, sure, why not? It's a, a meaningless name just to have a unique name for the, the project. Um, let's see. A uh, video uh, management. So this is this is kind of what I want to do is um, right now there are some specific things that I was trying to do around being able to take the recordings from these streams and um, organize them and um, extract the transcripts from them, have um, GPT-4 auto-summarize the transcript, um, have it um, potentially identify interesting moments. Maybe we could even go as far as like identifying things for like highlights or for clips. Um, that sort of thing. But then I do ha have some other ideas for things that are more sp specific to managing the streams themselves, not just like the post-processing. And then some other stuff I want to do around uh, providing um, uh, 
some other automation around video editing. So lots of things I would like to do with this. And I think this approach of having a very, like building little APIs, little microservices, and that, that term is, is has a lot of baggage these days, but a lot of little APIs and worker processes um, that do specific things and then having a, uh, a simple administrative style UI, which I think React Admin will um, provide for me, it's something I've used before in other settings, um, will you know be a good place to start. Now, I think I'll have this go ahead and initialize. We'll say the license is gonna be um, the uh, AGPL 3.0. That's typically what I do for uh, my personal projects when I'm sharing them, unless I have some other specific licensing concerns. Um, this basically means that uh, <laughs> a very simple summary is just that this code is available. If you use it, uh, you have to essentially provide it under the same license, the source code for the application. And uh, you also have to publish the, the source code if you were to say make a, a service uh, using this and you were to make changes to it, you'd have to share those changes. Um, there we go. And we'll add a readme and other stuff as, as we go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy that URL and we're going to, let's see, am I in the right folder? Yes, git remote add origin, glowing telegram. All right, and so I don't think, let's see if I can just pull origin main. All right, so now we should have a license file. Cool. Um, and so what I have so far, so we're, I'm just going to ignore the, the chatbot and the invent, but it, this is all stuff from the past project. And I'm just gonna make new folders for the new things as I go. So we have that license file here that uh, GitHub has added for us. Uh, for the uh, FRO General Public License version three, I have my read uh, my to do md file. I don't know. I guess I can check that in. Um, and there's a bunch of other files here. I'm just going to kind of just ignore. Uh, oh, I see. So I have multiple repositories now because this was uh, this already had a Git folder in it. Cool. Not confusing at all. Let me go ahead and full screen this so I have a little bit more real estate. Right, so uh, let's close that. There we go. That'll be make it easier to see what's going on. Um, so I have uh, a very simple Docker Compose file here. This is basically the one that I had been using for the other project. Um, it's not going to really make sense for me to check this in because um, like this is like very specific to my local install. Um, and it's at least right now, it's just here's how I can run Postgres and Redis locally. I'm not even running any services there. Um, so I think what I'll do on the get ignore file is I'll just ignore our compose.yaml. It's top level one. Um, and then we're also going to ignore, ignore old projects. So chatbot and uh, ignore the end. Python things. There you go. Uh, and video process processing. What is it? Project. There we go. So this is what I'll, I kind of start with a, uh, just a getting our file. Uh, 
I seem to have failed to... Ah, YAML. There we go. All right, add initial files. And then I just have an empty test.json for things that I might want to have um, in the project. All right, cool. So it's a beginning. <laughs> GitHub, and so this project is in uh, in my public uh, GitHub profile, Sabin. Uh, maybe I'll star it as well, I, or not star it, but uh, pin it. I have a couple of pin slots left, so there we go. So a new project uh, that we're gonna start working on today. All right, so. Um, I guess there's nothing really else to do. Let's let's start with the Rust API. I think that'll be kind of a, a fun place to start in terms of um, getting something running. Uh, and I need to see if I have like, I guess I can use curl or something to test it uh, manually, or maybe I have Insomni installed or something, or maybe I still have Postman installed. We'll, we'll see what happens. Let's uh, let's start with uh, rust up default stable, and looks like we are still stable, <laughs> still up to date. Uh, and then cargo, you can see I I did do a little bit of preparation uh, for the stream in terms of like uh, I went back. Um, like after every coding stream, I have like 20 tabs of stuff from either things that, from research during the stream or people sharing like, oh, what about this library? What about this tool? Um, so between all those things, uh, and I think this is one of them from the last stream. So Axum, uh, as I recall, is like um, a, a, a basic, uh, library for making uh, HTTP API service slash server uh, and so we're just I'm gonna make an initial API and we're just gonna throw kind of it's gonna be kitchen sink and then we'll see about whether it will make sense to have multiple rust API's it's gonna depend I mean so I'm of two minds about that. Uh, let's, let's let's make some progress here. So we have a test API. We have a cargo at Tomo uh, that we'll want to have here, and then um, we can open this up. So yeah, Axum is a web application framework that focuses on ergonomics and modularity. There was another one I was looking at uh, called uh, Rocket, and it seemed like this one was a little bit more bare bones and I thought that would be better for kind of a, a new project getting into Rust um, just kind of maybe going into the deep end but hey we have an example we can copy paste it, I'm sure it'll be fine um, yeah so I have a usage example here is there so we just add uh how, how does how do uh cargo.toml dependencies work so here's axum on creates the io 
Oh yeah, there's a command. That's that's kind of what I was wondering about. If like npm there was a command that you could use to uh, uh, add a dependency. Yay, there is. All right. Um, all right, and then we'll go into src main. And so we have a, a hello world example to start with. Uh, and I guess we could just copy paste uh, this example here. Uh, so let, we can take a look at this first though. So we have some kind of macro here around Tokyo, which as I understand it is like a asynchronous um, IO management library thing. As you can tell, I am very much an expert when it comes to Rust, which is not true at all. <laughs> um, all of my recent experience with Rust has been on this uh, on on stream, so uh, not not a lot of time. Uh, so it tells us it's initializing tracing. We can build our application with a route, so we make a router and we can provide routes. Um, and we can have a listener from Tokyo Net TCP listener, so we can listen on a port. Uh, and we can serve listener in an app and just presumably block the pro, you know, we serve the, the API. Um, and then it looks like we have some structs down here for inputs and outputs. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this. I wanna replace uh, our hello world with this right here and save it. And uh, yeah, I guess, oh, it looks like cargo stuff is running. Unused import, huh? And we don't have cert either, which is serialization, deserialization. Um, okay, we can fix that though. Let's see. I think it's just that, right? And I guess we need Tokyo too. Create or module Tokyo. Interesting. Unresolved import certa. These undeclared create. Huh. Oh, maybe if I save this. Something's happening. I'm not sure what root scanned means. I'm gonna find out. Okay, indexing. That looks promising. All right, so if I go back to here, uh, let's see. So this is complaining that it's unused import. Okay. Could not find main in Tokyo. Let's see. Oops. Try out GitHub Copilot's ability to diagnose what's going on here. Uh, some crates have optional features that can be enabled or disabled. In the case of Tokyo, the main attribute is part of the full feature. Now, is it true or is it a hallucination? Uh, I guess we're going to find out. So. I guess it was true. All right. 
right, all right. So now we have a thing that maybe we can run. Uh, could not parse input as Tommel. Interesting. Oh, right. Uh, version equals. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try running again. Uh, looks like we have something else that is being complained about now that we've addressed something else. So, you know, I'm feeling like the, uh, I mean, granted, it says it's a usage example. I guess we could look, we can find this example as others, as well as others in the example directory. So here we go. What does this look like? Perhaps, just perhaps, <laughs> we should get the specific dependencies uh, from the project, uh, the example project. All right. And then an src main.rs. Okay, otherwise this looks the same, except notice that the, the, the example that we copied had a bunch of things here um, that this doesn't have. Seems like maybe the readme, um, is a little out of date, perhaps. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this whole thing here, paste it in here. Cannot find function serve and create axum. Okay. I think that's interesting. Is there not a serve? Oh no, it is different. So we have some inconsistencies in uh, things are set up. So does this not have a listener anymore? Okay, so it doesn't do that. Oh, I see. Oh, hey, look, there's that use again. Now, are you happy with this? <laughs> uh, let's compare kind of what uh, okay, let's move the readme over. There we go. And turn on word wrap. So, differences here. So we're still initializing the tracing subscriber. We're still building a router, doing router new. Uh, we're still doing dot route with a path and git and a handler and users, create user. And then we just copied this part I guess I could add that debug back there so we can see the tracing stuff in action, maybe. Um, and then are the these methods any different? No, it looks basically the same. Okay, so let's try running this now. So ultimately what I want to do here is I want to have a, an API that will allow us to implement some of the functionality that we need for this um, video management processing application. Um, 
if I go back to the to-do, were there specific things that I wanted to try out here? I think, oh yeah. So what we're gonna do with this, um, some of the things that I had already built in, uh, in the Django app previously were around uh, audio to text, you know, so speech to text, essentially transcription um, and identifying uh, silences, breaks in the, the, the audio. And so um, I may implement those as Python, um, just like take that existing code and put those in workers that are kind of like standalone processes, um, taking jobs from Redis, basically the same way it was um, set up with Django, except I probably won't use Celery. Um, but there was one thing that we wanted from the last stream, which was a essentially a proxy service that would um, take a request from the front end for um, a chat completion. So essentially calling the uh, OpenAI uh, API for uh, the GPT-4 engine. Uh, oh, this is running <laughs> right now. Do I have, uh, oh, I still have Postman. So we'll see, uh, let's see what this looks like. Sign out and remove local data. All right, so this should be completely empty, right? Oh, this is perfect. I mean, it's sad because it used to be that you didn't have to have an account and you could have things <laughs> in here, but we can make a request. So let's go localhost 3000 um, and uh, we'll just go to the root, which th uses the root uh, function here, which returns hello world. So if we hit this with a get, we see hello world. It works. Which is pretty cool. We made an API. <laughs> we copied and pasted the existing code and uh, fumbled around for a little bit and got a working thing. Uh, I guess we can exercise the other endpoint, which is posting to users. Uh, do we need to post something specific? I think we do, right? This create user payload. So username. Um, and this is supposed to be as JSON. Okay, so we'll do body, we'll do raw JSON username test. Does that work? Yeah. If we pass test two, then that comes back test two. Okay, cool. And obviously this doesn't actually do anything. It just is just exercising the little API. So we have a working example of an API with Rust. So that's great. Uh, what was I saying? So we want a proxy um, for our kind of chat completion, um, chatbot component. So let's go take a quick look at that component so I can remind myself of what it's supposed to do and how it's supposed to work. Um, and we will come back to like the UI stuff. I think once we get um, a little bit further into working in this, this test API with Rust, then we can maybe switch tacks and do some front end stuff with React Admin. Um, but I wanna get a little bit further in here. So the, the idea with the, this chat dialogue component is that we are we have a set of messages that get sent to the the GPT-4 engine via the OpenAPI API, but we don't want our front end to call to the API directly um, because I just don't like the idea. And in other contexts where I'm actually making this something that's accessible to the outside world, you wouldn't want to have the API token be in the front end unless you're having the user supply that API token uh, on the fly somehow, but that's not really the intent here. The intent here is to have an application that will um, be responsible for managing like the use of the API and you know, we, 
if this were turned into a product or some kind of application, you might want to have authentication and things um, at the API level and in the front end as well to manage, you know, access. We're a ways away, away from that. But the idea is, is pretty common in which we want to provide an API that is a simplified version of the API that's being provided by a third party. And that could be something where we add additional validation or add additional context, um, both in a general sense, but also in a, like a, uh, a, uh, a chat GPT context uh, kind of thing, or we swap out the backend to do something else, or maybe have multiple different targets besides open API and having kind of a general purpose interface. All sorts of possibilities that are unlocked when you provide your own API that then passes that information on. And we wouldn't necessarily need to like write code to do this. I mean, um, there are, yeah, well, anyway, moving on. There's lots of, lots of options in the world, but let's not get bogged down. So what I want to do here is I think um, in my little example, wherever it is here, um, I want to have an API chat. Uh, let's see, is that going to work? I guess I need to have like, um, let's assume we keep the same port. So we're on localhost 3000. API chat. Okay, and we'll come back to that. Um, so we want to have a, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this default path. We're going to say API chat. Um, now, one of the things I'm thinking of here is that in reality, you know, this like I said, we're probably gonna have multiple services implementing APIs and we'll stitch them together. So this is where maybe I don't want the slash API here and I just wanna have a like a chat. And then the thing that's gonna stitch the APIs together, maybe just using Nginx would um, handle that. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, because we can just rewrite the, the path when we proxy into the service. So let's not overthink it. We can we can adapt. So we're gonna listen on port 3000, I guess. Um, we'll see if that conflicts. I don't remember what port. Uh, no, no, no. So the, I'm thinking of uh, Vite, which is what the web app that we were working on before. Uh, when it starts, it finds a port to listen to. So it'll be fine. It will adapt. Um, we're gonna get rid of this root function and we're going to create, we're going to change this to, um, oh good, we can rename. So let's, what are we going to call this function? Uh, complete chat, call it. Uh, this argument tells Axum to parse the request body uh, as JSON into a create user type. Well, we don't want to use create user, um, All right, so this is not actually, this is not text that's here. This this particular shade of gray is something where the, um, where VS Code with the, uh, the Rust extension is kind of showing us a preview of what the type is of payload. Cool. So our input, let me go back to here um, because we wanna see what we're sending here to send messages. So body is a list of chat message. Now here's a question for you. How do we, how do we use this? To uh, handle a list of things. Maybe let's go back to the Axum docs. Uh, where is JSON coming from? It is coming from Axum. 
examples folder docs. Also, that's the page that I'm on, uh, or pretty close anyway. Uh, let's see here, context compatibility, middleware, examples. Oh, here we go, here's a link to JSON. How do we handle a list of things? I just want to look at Serda. Hmm. Okay, so we have this create user strut. Uh, let's see here. So first of all, let me update the comments here. So this is the input and this is the output. And we want this to be, um, what would we call the body of this? This is a, hmm. I mean, we can't just do, this is not TypeScript. <laughs> Can't do that. Um, let's see, what is this JSON user? So does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I mean, it doesn't. Um, wait, hold on. So, oh, I see. There's nothing on the function itself that declares what the return type is. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, uh, into a list of chat message type. JSON vec chat message. Um, a contiguous global array type written as vec t short for vector. Maybe that will work. Um, so complete chat. And then the chat message, we already know what that should look like because we have a type here. So there's a, there's a content and a role. Um, and I guess I'm not gonna worry too much about enforcing specifics here. Um, Sometimes um, Copilot will answer that question. Other times it just likes to repeat the question back. Uh, all right, and so the struct that we're returning, we don't, yeah, we still want to return a list of, um, let's see here, payload. Uh, can we just, yeah, we'll, I'll leave the comment. Status code, okay, and then we want to just return. 
payload. We're just gonna echo back. Uh, and that means we don't we don't need that. And it doesn't doesn't like something. Status code JSON vec chat messages not satisfied. Um, some JSON. Uh, right. Hold on. Let's go back. Oh, I see. Wait. Oh no. No. Uh, um. Right, so we don't need to wrap this with JSON because it is. Is that vec chat message into response not satisfied? The trait into response is not implemented for status code vec chat message. Huh. Let's see. So what is it trying to do? Uh, I mean, that's, that's what I had before. Would you like to try again, Copilot? Decided to. Yeah, I know that it, it's 200 okay. Not created. Thanks. Derive. See, oh, right. So I didn't. Okay. Hold, hold that thought. I see. So we need to serialize and deserialize. Uh, and then. Alright. So that was actually kind of helpful. Um, so the, the issue was was that the previous version that had two se separate structs had der one had derived deserialized and one had derived serialized because one represented the output and one represented the input. But in this case, the output and the input have the same shape. They're lists of this chat message uh, struct. And so we want the single struct to be both serializable and deserializable. These are uh, both coming from Surdy, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we should have an API chat endpoint that just echoes back whatever we supply it. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to stop the process. There we go. And then we'll run it again. Uh, we are no longer using get, so we can remove that. Looks like the build was successful. Oh. Mm. Uh, right, and it's running. So uh, I guess I'll flip over to uh, Postman. I'll do API chat. And the body is going to be an array. Uh, <clears throat> roll test. Content. Hello world. And uh, what I'm expecting is to get that response back. Whatever we supply comes back. And that is actually not bad uh, as a, a thing to use to then test our component. Right, so we have uh, our chatbot uh, app here. And I'll npm, uh, hold on, what is the command? For Vite, there is dev. I'll probably do npm run dev. So, I mean, might as well just see this running, right? Um, okay. Cool. Uh, styling. 
Oh, I see. Uh, right. So I think maybe I still have mock service worker. Uh, oh no, we have a we have a cores issue. Right, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Is it? Let's solve that. Let's solve that first. Um, and then we'll, we'll dive back into the rest stuff. So, uh, or <laughs> what am I trying to say? Um, I think what I want to do first is come in here to chatbot and we're going to turn off this handler question mark. I don't know if this actually is intercepting anything because we are What, what, what is actually going on here with mock service worker? I'm not completely clear. MSW browser.js fetch. Um, is it because we have, oh, let me turn this. So I think this is just because we have mock service worker at all. It's uh, doing things. So let's do this. That is, it's intercepting, doing any kind of request. Uh, there we go. So now we can actually see the what's actually happening here. So we are doing an options request to API chat and we're getting a 405 method not allowed. And so that's why cores is not working. Now, how do we implement um, maybe actually I should look at the docs to see that maybe there's something built in for cores no results for cores so that's <laughs> that's probably a no um, let's do this uh, yep and then handle uh, cores pre-flight requests so that's interesting that's not really a thing is it yeah um, oh I see so first of all we can do routing options yeah it's not happy about that either let's just um complete chat reflect yeah good and then Copilot's thinking. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> uh, is there? Surely there's a way. Let's see, let's see. Axum Rust API course. Of course, it's rejecting with the world. Even with core posted, there's a cores layer. Is that a thing? Um, layer permissive okay cool so uh, so that goes on the router 
after the route portion, looks like. And then we just need to get Core's Layer, wherever, wherever that's coming from. Uh, one year. Okay, so... Maybe. Aha. Let's see. From tower HTTP. Semicolon. All right, all right. Uh, and then of course this has to be stopped and started. Uh, right. So it's a it's a transitive dependency. Um, let's do this. Let's do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cargo add. There it is. Okay. Now I'll save that, and hopefully this will be happier. Yeah, we don't need that options there anymore. Cannot find cores in Tower HTTP. Really? This example is wrong. <laughs> uh. Hold on, in main. Now it's still Tower HTTP cores. Is there a feature that we need to turn on? Wait, um, there is. Cool. Features equals cores. Bam. All right. Now maybe we can we can run this. But this is this is the kind of thing where I did want to actually have even if it's not the real front end that we're going to be using, um, it's just kind of the the standalone component from our our last stream. Have something actually try to call the API to surface things like this, right? So that, um, you know, when we send this, there we go. So we got, we got our pre-flight requests going out and the response headers say, allow everything, which is not what you probably honestly want, um, but for now is fine. Uh, let's go ahead and put a, a to-do, to-do. Uh, yeah, sure, that comment is fine. Something like that, where we're like, we need to figure out what we want to actually do for our cores uh, in this, but we don't need to do that right now. Um, and then here's the actual request going out. So cores is protecting our backend, um, or really is effectively protecting a user from having a random website. Um, calling a service that the user might be authenticated to, but wouldn't anticipate that service being called by some other random website. And Cores is meant to prevent that sort of um, abuse. Um, and so here we're saying this endpoint should be allowed by anyone to, and with any method from anywhere with all the headers, it's, it's just free to use by anyone, assuming they can get to it, which no one can, uh, because this is just running locally on my system. Uh, hopefully no one can. And then we hit localhost. So this is the actual request going out. Here's the uh, request coming from our front end. And the response just echoes back everything, right? Um, and so we can see, here's the chat message, user test. And so we can accumulate them now because um, when we get that response, any messages beyond the original message 
um, are visible. And this becomes the context that we use to then uh, exchange more and more, more and more messages. So this is working in that the interaction between the front end and the back end is correct. Um, the next thing to do would be to actually call the um, uh, open API or open AI API uh, to actually do a thing. Uh, and you know we've, we've been waiting to see that for like a week. so let's let's do that. Um, I did find I'm gonna skip over the diesel, which is the uh, kind of ORM. Um, we are gonna do that. But I found this crate called OpenAI Dive, and it's a uh, it, it says it's unofficial async Rust library to interact with the Open AP, the OpenAI API. Um, and so we're going to use this for I did consider um, instead just calling the HTTP API, and we could do that. But um, this will be good. Now, okay, we'll have to figure out how we want to read in the uh, uh, API key, but we'll get there. So we're going to add this this crate for Open API Dive or Open AI Dive, um, and it has features. Now I know to pay attention to that, but uh, that's fine. So. I could have an environment variable. I think what I want to do is have this um, read uh, open, AP, open AI key, not from the environment, but from uh, dot dot open AI key dot txt. Now, I have no idea how to do that in Rust, but uh, Copa seems to think it does, uh, and maybe this even compiles, or it passes the cargo check. Uh, all right, so this this is believable, right? It looks like it's it's happy with it. Uh, STDFS read to string, um, and then we have a path here, uh, and we trim just in case there's any white space, and then we do to string. Uh, okay. So that's believable. Um, and then, looks like we want to create a client. And I think that should happen inside of our request handler. Hey, look, it even does a thing. Is that even the right? No. I mean, maybe. So here's a question. We have open, AP, open AI key here. Um, how do we get it into complete chat? Hmm? Obviously, it doesn't exist in this, this scope. Because we cre created it up here. I guess I could read the key uh, at runtime. That's not what I would prefer to do. So here's an open question to do. How to read, um, well, we know how to read from a file, but how to read in uh, context settings and share them with the uh, route handlers. Yeah. doesn't like those arguments because it's just API key. Uh, what's the problem here? Client new. Client new. API key. Huh. Let's open API key. All right, I need to save. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think we need immutable clients here. Uh, and then, so then we want to look in the docs here for how do we do the chat completion API? Chat completion. Uh, I'm not going to worry about streaming. We're not really set up to do that. 
um, a thing worth considering for this sort of thing would be if you wanted to have streamed responses. So like in the actual chat GPT UI where you can type in stuff and you can see it like streams in little, little bits of text a little bit at a time uh, so that you can immediately start seeing the result. Um, to do something like that, I mean, we could do, the first thing that comes to mind would be to use like WebSockets where the client would send a message and then we would handle that and we would put messages back on the socket in response as we're streaming the result. Uh, and we could do something like that, but that's that's not what I'm doing here. We're, we're gonna we're we're not gonna worry about doing that quite yet. Um, oh, hey, look, there's already a chat message type, uh, which is interesting. Okay, we may have to change the name of our type to make things uh, work okay, right? Because we called our message chat message. Uh, let's call this simple chat message. There we go. And that didn't rename this, so that's good. Uh, and then we're gonna build those parameters. Uh, let's see, a model. And we just want GPT-4. Uh, there we go. And then uh, messages. Okay, so here we go. Here's uh, some autocomplete taking the payload. We'll make an iterable thing that we map over. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, that's not a. Oh, uh, mm. what does the chat message here represent? Is that the return type? I think it is. Okay. And then client check completion parameters. Obviously there's a bunch of other things or use dot dot default default. Okay, I'm down down with that. There we go. It even it, it knew that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and then client chat create await client chat completion. Okay, chat create await expect uh, unwrap. How do you feel about that? Uh, but, 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 but. Check, okay, so it is check completion, perhaps. Nope. Um, oh, I see. It is chat, and then it's dot create. And then there's no unwrap because we already get that via something. All right, and then this is complaining because try using a conversion method, dot to string. All right, and then this is complaining because struct chat message has no field name text. Interesting, What what does it have then? What is the what is the type chat message? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll look at that in a minute. So can we I can't control click to look at the chat message. Does F12 work? Nope. Can I look at it this way? Nope. Okay. So chat message. Uh role content name. Content role. Uh, that's roll from roll is not a thing. Interesting. Okay, so what do we got here? 
Uh, that would be cool if that did exist, but I'm guessing it doesn't. No, okay, let's look at the... Do we have uh, a type? Role. So we have like role, user role, other things, but... Okay, great. GitHub. How is this defined? Function. Yeah. Impl std str from str for role. So. Role from str. See, so it says no variants or associated item named from str found for enum role. So how do I use this? That role is a string. Are you happy with that? No. There is a from str, yeah? No variant or associate item name from str found for enum. So, what version of uh, OpenAPI, OpenAI Dive? Uh, 0213. And Two thirteen. Chat message. Roll. Oh, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist in the version that we're using. Okay, that is unfortunate. Hmm. Let's see, we implement display. Great. Okay, um, and this is the latest version, so maybe there's, let's see, when was this? Three months ago, and then the version that I was just looking at that had from SDR was three days ago. Okay, so there's been changes since the last published version. Okay, um, so let's see, let roll be... Uh, how do I Equals. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I was looking for was a match. Um, but this is not the right thing. Um, are you seriously? Okay, that's fine. Um, what are the actual rules here? Ba, 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 ba. System user assistant function. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there perhaps a more idiomatic way of doing this? Probably. function doesn't exist uh, in the current version so I'll just do that and then um, right so how so we we need to actually do this inside of the map uh, yeah that's doable right because this is just a block one argument found two. It's really hard to see what's going on. Oh, here we go. Um, cool. Example. What were we doing with name instead of providing it? We must go back, 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 back to one of these pages. Oh my. Okay. Um, what about a file? Create a translation. List files, upload file. Ooh, fancy. All right. Um, images. Check completion. Uh, none. What is this, Python? All right. Uh, right. To string. So it. Aster? Aha, all right. Uh, uh, unwrap? Nope. Okay, so that, that just works as is. Uh, I think if we don't know the role, I'm just going to have it be user. Okay. And this at least has stopped yelling at me. <laughs> uh, and then, so what's in response? Uh, let's see. Payload. Hey, response that choice is sub zero. Dot text that clone is not right. Um, so let's go back to the docs. I feel like we're really close here um, to having something working. Uh, can we see? Let's 
Let's see, choice is sub zero. And then. I think I need to do the same thing where we map. Except we don't want to do that. Yeah. There we go. So we build simple chat message back out from cloning. I don't think it's text though. Isn't it just still content and role? Now, there we go. Good. So no method named iter found for struct chat completion choice. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see. Hold on. The problem I'm having right now is that the way the window was positioned, I'm not seeing where that link goes to. Okay, that's going to open AI. So let's go back to GitHub. Uh, and I want to see what is check completion choice. It's a struct. Okay, and there's a message. Is there? And it has a chat message in it. Wait, how does the front end work again? So when we're calling the API and we get, are we expecting a single message back and then we concatenate it? Uh, send messages, response, result, set messages to result. So we're expecting all of the messages to come back. Okay, I see. So message, um, calls, simple chat message. So is the, so chat message here has content and role. Content, uh, definitely not that. Our response, same deal. There we go. Uh, and then, okay. Uh, right dot message again. Now, is this part good? Good. Wow, I can't believe it's been coming up on uh, an hour and a half. Time has been flying. Uh, okay, so uh, then what I wanna do is I wanna take, take the original payload and add message to the end. Does that work? Now get a mutable reference to payload. I guess payload wasn't mutable before. Nope. Are we allowed to mutate the uh, the payload that we were provided in the handler? Uh -huh. uh, we're not running right now, so I guess at this point, this should um, maybe work. <laughs> Let's see if it actually fully compiles and then I guess we'll try it out, right? So if this all goes as planned, uh, when I go back to the, the Veet uh, app, and put in a message, it's gonna send that whole stack of context, um, which is to say, let's see if I can find that again. 
basically this stuff, right? The job, I summarized the provided video transcripts into a title and description, and then um, context, which I'm not providing here, uh, and a transcript, and uh, it will it will do the thing. So let's go back over to here, and I'm gonna refresh because I don't want all of these test messages in there. Uh, and we're gonna clear the history. Uh, this is a test uh, to see if this works. Send. And this might take a little bit longer. Yes. So, as an AI language model developed by OpenAPI, OpenAI, uh, I need a specific video transcript or contextual information to craft a title, description, and clean transcription. Could you please provide a copy of the video context or a summarization of the video's content? Is the response. Right, so we can see that here. Right, so the, here's what, all the stuff we initially sent, and this is what we got back. So now, if I were to send another message, you can see Roll came back as assistant. I think one thing I do want to do is I want to normalize the Roll coming back. Um, and then this is probably a good place for a break here. Um, I think the next steps, let me think about this. I do want to do a little bit more stuff on the Rust side. I want to set up diesel. Um, some of the things that we're going to want to do are going to involve interacting with a Postgres database. Hey, Brainless, how's it going? How's your, uh, your Sunday been going? Um, I need to normalize, normalize the, uh, the roll string here. Is there like a two lowercase? Uh, Copilot seems to think so. Hey, that maybe works. Sleepy, very sleepy. Yeah. How am I? Uh, doing good, doing good. I uh, got a, a decent amount of sleep. Uh, and the fact that I have less than a week and a half uh, of work left for the rest of the year, <laughs> it keeps me going. All right, so, um, you know, I think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the, the process here. Uh, let's, I have, you know, we're not quite at the hour and a half mark, so let's let's try to get uh, Diesel set up. Uh, we got Axum going, uh, we got our test API, we got uh, OpenAI, OpenAI Dive. Maybe someday I'll stop first saying Open API. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we have a crate. We're, we're just gonna add, uh, let me close all the, the React stuff down. We don't need that. Um, I'm gonna try to see if we can get um, this going. So I'll just copy the, the things that it tells me to copy here. I can also close chatbot, go into the cargo toml. I'll add diesel and dot envy. Uh, cargo install diesel CLI. Install it, install it in our system. Let's give that a shot. Seems like it doesn't have any problems running on Windows, so that's good. Oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> Uh, can we just not have MySQL? Aha! Windows, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't think that was specifically a Windows issue. Um, I mean, 
I probably would not be doing this through a package manager anyway. I would just be using this cargo command to run it and I would be unlikely to have a MySQL library installed on a, on a Linux system either. So <laughs> that's not, I mean, Windows has lots of uh, differences <laughs> to put it nicely. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's that specific thing was Microsoft's fault. And this looks like it might actually work, which is good. So I've never used this, uh, this before. <laughs> Aww. What now? Uh, probably because I don't have libpq.lib. Okay. Yep. What a beautiful command. Um, check out diesel CI configuration for a working setup. All right. So install Postgres Windows. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, uh huh. Uh huh. Cool. Uh, okay, so let me PowerShell run as administrator. What could possibly go wrong? Paste. Uh, do I want to run the script? Okay, let's let's blow this up a little bit. Uh, wants to run chocolatey install that PS1. I'm sure it's fine, right? <laughs> I mean, that's Windows, right? At least we have we have Chopka. It's one of the package managers. There's also Winget, and then all the different language-specific package managers. I mean, honestly, it's not too different from Linux, except typically, at least your distro will have a a single package manager, and then a lot of packages. Uh, of course, then there's, you know, you're on Ubuntu and you want something that's not available. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta go get a separate, like a, a deb uh, build from somewhere and then, yeah. It's just a mess everywhere. It's just some places are more messy than others. Now, is it gonna work? <laughs> I mean, everything has its problems. Some problems are uh, more of a pain than others. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of Windows pain. <laughs> Get it? Oh, window pain? Uh, pun was not intentional, but it's still there. Now, is this doing something? So this is installing. Is it gonna work afterwards? <laughs> is is the cargo install gonna work? I don't know. What if I develop instead of a container? Well, that's an option. I think if I was going to do that, I might honestly, uh, let's see, so options. I could probably just use WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux and then connect VS Code to that, that would be an option. Like if this didn't work and it didn't seem like there was a good path forward, that could be a, a route to go down. Or I might, um, 
just have a VM. I don't, hmm. Yeah, inside of a container would be okay. I would, um, that's what I was doing, sort of doing for Daily Jewel, right? Where I had containers set up where the, the source code was mounted into the container and things were run. It, it's not perfect. Uh, make sure I don't have like a UAC dialog that is underneath windows that I need to accept. No, okay. It's just thinking. Um, okay, so I think while this is going, I'm just gonna keep on looking at the, uh, the instructions for, for diesel uh, as much as I can. <laughs> um, so we're gonna make a .env file. And this is gonna be database URL. Postgres, Postgres colon Postgres at localhost. Uh, Postgres. There we go. Uh, and now diesel CLI can set up everything for us. No, it can't. <laughs> uh, let's see. And we're gonna write a C small CLI that lets us manage a blog. We need a table. We can create a migration. Interesting. Can we? Let's start copying and pasting. What's diesel for? That's a good question. Um, so it's like a, um, it's, I think it <laughs> uh, is effectively a CRM. Let's pull that up really quick. So, uh, or not a CRM, ORM. <laughs> Those are very different things. Uh, diesel is a safe, extensible ORM and query builder for Rust. Um, I'm not a huge fan of ORMs and this is, like a lot of things, this is like trauma from the past. <laughs> uh, but query builders are very nice versus like writing raw SQL uh, strings. And, uh, and I'll, yeah, and you neither. Um, yeah, so you can, you know, you can uh, query from tables. You make that query and hopefully, yeah, so you can, you could like make a function that builds part of a query. And then you could have like, you could either have conditional logic to add more things onto that query or uh, either within a function or you could pass a, an incomplete query or a partial query around and build on top of it. That's a, a thing that I really like with query builders that is not fun at all if you're just dealing with uh, SQL strings. Um, and if we have some raw SQL, we can pull that from a file and bind it. You much rather have, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to debugging the SQL, you definitely want to. One, one thing I have done on projects is have like um, a library that has all of the functions to build the SQL, and then use snapshot testing to have it generate. And this is in a, especially in a context where this is an application that's uh, at least the, the needs to support multiple database engines, have snapshot tests that run the function with sample data um, to generate the query, not to run it, but just to generate the query that the underlying query builder builds for you. And then put that in the snapshot. And so you can visually inspect it. You can see how it builds the query. You can take that um, and run that and then have like integrations on top of that that actually run those queries on the fly. And maybe we could explore doing some of that um, sort of thing, depending on how this goes. Speaking of which, hey, it finished. Uh, have changed. In PowerShell, you can do refresh ENV. I've never done refresh ENV. Huh, I didn't know that was a thing. 
<laughs> now does this work? Uh, no, 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 not chocolate, not choco, cargo, install. All right, fingers crossed that this will work this time. Last time it was trying to build the Postgres feature and couldn't link to a library because said library didn't exist. So we'll see, we'll see. Now, a thing I'm wondering about, I already have database tables. I wonder if there's a way to like have Diesel generate a migration of the existing tables that are there. So we'll have to see. Uh, the POC my company is working on to migrate one of our services, they decided to go with SQLite. Yeah, for a proof of concept, I think that makes a lot of sense. Or, like, is the intent to use SQLite just for the proof of concept? Or is that you want, the, the end goal is to use SQLite and uh, the proof of concept is just using that? I mean, there's nothing wrong with SQLite if you have a use case where, you know, that makes sense. Um, like at one point I made this utility script for doing a, a bunch of like migration stuff to do with Google Drive. And I use SQLite to keep track of like what files have been migrated. And I had um, a thing they advise you not to do is have like multiple workers because you can only have, um, there's like contention issues, right? With, with uh, the database, but uh, it still worked out pretty well having multiple workers processing um, directories and files and then using SQLite to, uh, as a ledger for that data. Uh, you, they, they were mentioning that was good enough in a, in a Rust context. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so this still doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, so, Rust Postgres. Uh, restart your PC. See when, when the answer is restart your PC, <laughs> you must be on Windows. <laughs> uh, do we have a post scroll? Yeah. Okay. B -b -b lib. Just sudo apt install libqdev. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, Windows update restart, Linux update. <laughs> uh. All right. I mean, the funny thing is, right now, I don't know that we actually even need. Firefox hung there for a second. I think things are fine. Um, I don't. I don't think I even really need this to be working at the moment. Like, um, the next steps aren't going to involve the the Rust API talking to the database. At some point, it will. Um, but okay. So to do. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So we, we've done this stuff. Uh, okay. Figure out how to, uh, <laughs> how to use diesel. Um, let's see. What do I want to do here? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Redis is really great. Um, Redis is uh, a great like data structure library turned into a service. 
Um, and I've used it quite a bit for uh, specifically um, several projects where I wanted uh, like pub sub kind of functionality. Like this was this was quite a while ago, but I did a project where I was doing like a, a, a multiplayer like um, like web game, uh, and I think I've done a couple of these, but I think it was backgammon, and then basically it was web sockets um, to a service that was a very lightweight service on top of Redis, and I used Redis to kind of like. Um, publish and subscribe to the workers that were uh, tied to the WebSocket sessions for the players in a particular game. Uh, that was a long time ago. Um, figure out how to... So what do I, what do I, how do I want to fix this? So options are um, I could... I can make a Docker container for the um, for the test API, like let's let's just Dockerize the API, and then um, I can use Docker Compose to run the API, but also to run commands inside of the context of that container. Um, or I can build just a specific Docker Compose file for Diesel that has the diesel CLI installed, since we don't need the diesel CLI in the container for the for the actual API. Maybe let's do that. So let's say um, uh, build uh, diesel uh, CLI Docker image will be a thing to do. <laughs> like that, not really. Okay, but we are well over halfway through the stream. So uh, I think it's time for a little break, uh, which does a couple of things for me. It means I can get up and stretch my legs. I can get some water since I've just had coffee so far today. And uh, then I can also cut this for uh, YouTube later. So I shall return in just a few minutes. Um, I think Things to do for the rest of the stream are going to be working on that diesel CLI and getting that working, and then probably shifting focus over to um, React Admin and getting that going. And then there'll probably be some time left after that to kind of see where it goes from there. Okay, BRB. <laughs> 